You are tuned in to On Air with Chris Shanafell. Welcome back on air with Chris Shanafell as we continue our player spotlight series with the 2020 NFL draft class. And I'm now joined by Reed Harrison Ducros, the defensive back out of Duquesne University by way of Boise State University. Reed, I appreciate you taking the time tonight, man. How's everything going as we are now 23 days away from draft day? Oh, man, it's going good. You know, um, this journey uh, or this process going through getting ready for pro day on the combine and then getting ready for the draft um, is definitely something I've, I've dreamed about. It, it's fun when you can – you know, you can have something that you love to do be your job. So I'm just enjoying the process. Yeah, and, uh, you know, some unfortunate circumstances has caused this draft process to be unlike any other read. Um, you know, it's certainly the biggest thing for, you know, throughout this draft process, especially for under the radar guys like yourself, Reed, is the pro day workout, combine workouts. Unfortunately, due to the coronavirus outbreak that important workout was canceled i know you've been working out at one of the top training facilities in the country michael johnson performance you've also been uh working with former green bay packers great wide receiver donald driver i'd love to know how those matchups have gone uh gone over yeah. um, what, what have the past few months exactly consisted of for you though reed as you prepare for the next level yeah so i started at michael johnson um, january 2nd and then it was an eight- or nine-week program, so we'd train in the morning. So I'd wake up, like, at 5, 5.30, um, drive over there. We'd have a morning session, and then we'd have a lunch break, and then we'd come back for an afternoon session, um, and then we'd be done for the day. Um, I think it was really cool. Um, like you were saying, Michael Johnson is one of the premier pre-combine, pre-pro day facilities to train at nationwide, I believe. Um, that goes from the staff to the technology to the nutrition um, all the way to the gear that they give you. I feel like they always put their best foot forward in every every aspect of um, the whole pro day combine um, journey and experience. So it was definitely cool as well as a lot of big game guys with us like Jerry Judy was there, um, Makai Beckton was there um, to just throw out a couple of names. Um, it was kind of cool training. It was cool training with them because um, I know I obviously could have played at that top FBS level, um, but just working out with them, being with them, is kind of cool comparing yourself um, to see, like, all oh, this guy was making plays that were top ten on ESPN. Uh, he's right next to me working out. Um, so a lot of a lot of friendships and a lot of bonds were made going there. Um, so it was definitely a cool experience. And then with Donald Driver, obviously, he's a Green Bay Packer legend. Uh, Reed, don't don't speak too highly of Donald Driver here, Reed. I mean, we're based out of Chicago, so uh, our, our Bears <laughs> fan listeners might take a, a little bit to heart there. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's a uh, he's a he's a great guy uh, off the field as well as on the field. Um, but having somebody like him in your back pocket um, is definitely a blessing because his his training facility is five minutes from my house, wow. and each workout that I do with him. He leads it um, completely. So be, having him to be able to having him to be able to take me through every each and every workout, along with um, three or four other pro day people, pro day participants is definitely a, definitely a blessing and a great experience. Absolutely, and obviously, just kidding about that. I mean, Donald Driver, a Chicago Bears killer, um, a great career that he had there in Green Bay. And, um, you know, it's pretty cool that he's kind of been helping you out throughout this process, getting you ready for the next level, because he was a former small school guy himself coming from Alcorn exactly. State uh, in HBCU school, um, being drafted in the seventh round, and then going on to have, um, you know, what I would call a Hall of Fame-like career career. Um, with the Green Bay yeah. Packers in the NFL. So I'm sure that was just an awesome experience. And then, like you said, being able to um, perform with some of the best uh, uh, in the country, you know, that being like a Jerry Judy there at Michael Johnson performance, I'm sure that just kind of re-energizes you um, as you continue to make your way to the next level. I see that you recently had a mock pro day 
uh, read in which you ran a 439 40-yard dash, a 385 short shuttle, which is the best that I've seen uh, recorded so far this year. Might just be the best that I've ever seen in terms of uh, short shuttle times. Um, you also ran a 6-4-2 L drill. So, I mean, these are some pretty elite numbers to say the least. I know you would have liked to have had a, a real uh, a combine or a real pro day to showcase these numbers and your athleticism in front of NFL scouts live in person. I'm sure that film, though, is being sent to all 32 NFL teams in the league. Um, overall, how do you feel about those numbers that uh, you, you put up that you've been working so um, so, so fiercely over these last few months for, uh, and do you have anything for us uh, in terms of the vertical broad jump and bench press by chance? Yeah. Um, I feel, I feel really good about my numbers. Um, I PR'd in everything. Um, I was close in all of them, um, but just actually running it and having it on film um, and then doing the best that I've ever done is uh, definitely a positive and uh, like you said, even though the pro days, the official pro days were kind of canceled. Uh, one of the things they taught us at Duquesne is uh, like we have a motto, it's called Dukes Adjust. And so basically you just have to roll with the circumstances. Um, you only can control really what you can control. Um, so I just try to make the best out of the situation. Um, and then vertical, uh, my best is a 32. Um, but we didn't have one out on the field. Obviously, we didn't have access to one. My broad jump was a nine, nine and a half. Bench was thirteen. Okay. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, obviously, overall, some very elite numbers. I mean, that those numbers certainly uh, help your draft stock. If anything, you, you got to think. And uh, again, being able to get those numbers across uh, to NFL teams will certainly be big. Again, we're chatting with 2020 NFL draft prospect. Reed Harrison Ducros, the cornerback out of Duquesne University. And uh, Reed, talking about your football journey, your football career, being from Colleyville Heritage High School in Texas, what was that uh, recruiting process like for you? And how did you ultimately decide that Boise State was going to be the best fit for you? Again, reminder for the listeners out there, you were actually at Boise State for two years before landing at Duquesne. Yeah, so the recruiting process is, Honestly, it's crazy. I think it's crazier. I might be biased because from Texas, everybody plays football. Everybody's expected to play football. So there's such a huge pool of people that um, college scouts have to kind of go through and weave their way through to find, um, to find the, I guess, find the talent. But I ended up choosing Boise State. Um, it was I chose them because they're my best football offer. I had offers to Utah State as well as some Ivy League schools um, to kind of name a few. But I picked Boise State because it reminded me of Texas high school football. You know, um, Boise State football is the thing in Idaho. You know, there's no major league baseball team, football team, basketball. It's all about Boise State football. So every Saturday night when there's a game, it's kind of like that Texas high school movie. The whole town shuts down. <laughs> and if you're not at the game, you're doing something wrong. Um, so it's just that that college, that I guess that Texas high school football small town feeling was, or is Boise State, just on a, obviously a time 10 steroided level. Um, so it's, it's honestly a surreal experience. Um, playing at Boise State, playing on the blue, having a packed crowd, 40,000 every game. Um, it's definitely definitely a cool experience. Again, you would spend your first two years at Boise State before deciding that you would transfer to Duquesne. Um, yeah. So you would go from Texas to Idaho to ultimately landing <laughs> in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. What led yeah. you to Duquesne University? Yeah, so when I, um, when I decided I was going to transfer and um, enter the portal. Uh, I had so Duquesne was the first school to offer me actually, and the first to offer me a full ride. Um, but I honestly didn't know where Duquesne was. I'd never heard of it before. Um, so after that, UT offered me a scholarship the next spring, so I'd have to pay for a year of school, and then they put me on scholarship, um, as well as Western Illinois offered me a full scholarship, and then at the end, University of Oklahoma offered me a preferred walk-on. Um, the biggest thing for me on 
and part why I chose Duquesne. The first part is going into college. Um, I always told myself I didn't want my parents to pay for anything. Um, I wanted to be as much off of their payroll as possible. So I wanted my school completely paid for, and that was one of the biggest things for me. And obviously Duquesne um, offered that, as well as I'd never lived on the East Coast before. So I thought it'd be a cool experience, and why not be able to why not go to Duquesne and be able to live on the East Coast uh, for free? So. Yeah, and again, being there at Duquesne University, you're smack dab right in the middle of the city of Pittsburgh. Yeah. So uh, that's always a, a very cool experience. I actually had the opportunity back in August to meet with a lot of the coaching staff uh, there at Duquesne University, um, Reed, and head coach Jerry Schmidt could not have endorsed you better both as a person and by the way you play the cornerback position. Um, coach Schmidt has been with the Dukes for 15 seasons how is he, as well as longtime defensive back coach there at uh, Duquesne, Darnell Richardson, how have they kind of helped you take your game to the next level that we've seen over the past two years, being one of the top cornerbacks in the FCS? Uh, what, what's it been like playing for those guys the past couple of years? Yeah, no, they're great. Um, first off, they're great um, men. They're great individuals, um, as well as on the field. They really attack the – mental side of it, especially Coach Schmidt. Um, it was funny because in, in fall camp, because uh, my junior year, I didn't have, I didn't give up any touchdowns, but I didn't get any interceptions either. So going into my senior season, uh, one of my goals was to get more interceptions and get more turnovers because that's what NFL teams want. Um, so in fall camp, there was a play, I remember it, it was an out route, and I broke on it and I just broke it up. And uh, Coach Schmidt got on to me. He was like, you know, you could you could have easily picked that ball. You should you should take more chances this year. I know you you locked down your side of the field last year. Why don't you why don't you make some plays? And then I was like, you know, you're right. So I ended up making five picks. So his 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 thoughts were definitely definitely taken in and appreciated. Um, so no, nothing nothing but the best for Coach Schmidt, Coach Richardson, and that staff um, because. At the end of the day, they're, they're the first to have offered me a new home going into a situation where I didn't really know where I was going to go. Um, so nothing but love for them and love for Pittsburgh. So, Yeah, you mentioned it. As a senior, you finished the season uh, with – over 30 tackles, five interceptions, you know, I mean, that five interceptions regardless is impressive, but especially seeing as you didn't have any your junior year. Um, but I want to ask you, Reed, uh, 2019, your senior year, your last go around at the college level, and uh, again, it's only your second year there at Duquesne, and you were one of the players that were named a team captain um what did that mean to you does that mean anything to you knowing that you know you're one of the players that the not only the coaching staff but fellow teammates look up to oh yeah no it definitely does i pride myself on being a positive role model um not only on the field but off the field as well so that's in the classroom um academically helping out friends when they need help um with classes and stuff like that, whether it's in the playbook, classroom, um, and then just being there for them um, when they when they need me or need somebody to either talk to or just for anything. Um, so when I was offered or when I was named team captain, um, it, mean, it meant a lot to me because I feel like it showed that my hard work, um, my hard work and my investment into the team was being recognized. Because I never, I never really looked for recognition. I really just kept my head down, worked hard, and was there for anybody who needed it. Um, so being elected, that was definitely, definitely one of the highlights of my college career, especially getting there the year prior. So. Mm -hmm. Again, we're chatting with 2020 NFL Draft prospect, the defensive back of Duquesne University, Reed Harrison, Duke Rose. And, uh, Reed, when you hear that 2020 NFL Draft prospect, uh, what kind of goes through your mind? I'm sure it's always been the dream to play at the professional level. Now here you are at the doorsteps of the NFL. Um, when did it hit you that you had a legit shot at furthering your playing career at the pro level? Um, honestly, I think it hit me. Um, when I was at Boise State, we had played, we played Washington State. Unfortunately, we lost that game. Um, 
in triple overtime. But playing against them and being named the highest rate the highest rated player as a PFF against that team with Mike Leach and Luke Falk and that crew who were um, doing really well against other Pac-12 teams uh, that season. Playing against them and doing well against them, it kind of gave me um, kind of like the the mindset that, hey, I could, I could actually play in the NFL. And then this past season, um, shutting down the receivers as well as getting interceptions um, and then getting my last one and then when the game, when the in the biggest game of the season, when I knew scouts were there, um, it really kind of solidified that thought process. Uh, and then just seeing my name as a 2020 NFL prospect is it's surreal um, for two reasons. One, because like you said, I dreamed about playing in the NFL since since I was little. I have baby pictures of me holding footballs and football jerseys, so it's always been football's always been instilled in my life. And as well as it makes me want to work even harder. Um, I say that because I'm almost to my dream and once I get there I don't want to let it up and I don't want to I don't want to fail I want to be there as long as possible so it just makes me work even harder so uh, so especially with this quarantine thing I'll be sitting down and I'll be like well I can do some extra push-ups or do some extra sit-ups or watch some more film or just something to not waste time um, to just keep pouring into being the best version of myself I can be whenever I figure out what team I'm going to. Absolutely. A lot of people have you slotted as, uh, no pun intended, as a slot cornerback, um, you know, a nickelback at the next level, Reed. Uh-huh. I mean, is that the position that you feel most comfortable playing at? I know you've seen a lot of time there in the slot at Duquesne. Is that where you probably project the best at the uh, pro level? What are some of the other positions that you're capable of playing? Yeah, so I pride myself on being very versatile. Um, I can play outside, slot, um, safety. Uh, I can play every special team position except kicking the ball, so even holding holding for extra points. Um, No, but I'm very comfortable um, in a lot of positions, Um, and especially slot, I guess slot and outside. It's just, I always say it's just a different approach to each because in the slot, you have a different route tree as opposed to outside. You have a lot more keys at the slot as opposed to outside. Um, and then also in the slot, you have help over the top as opposed to when you're outside, you're really on that island. Um, so it's just a different approach um, to the slot versus the outside, but I feel like I'm comfortable in both. Yeah, I actually host a uh, weekly show with former Chicago Bears Nickelback DJ Moore, and uh, okay. you know he, he was on the Bears uh, team back with Lance Briggs and Brian Urlacher, Charles Tillman, all those guys, and they nicknamed him Baby Backer because the Nickelback <laughs> position is more so closer to a linebacker position, I guess, oh, than yeah. it would be uh, a cornerback. So uh, you know, and, and you know, I gotta admit, Reed, when watching your game. Uh, you know, not necessarily DJ Moore jumped to mind, but a, another former Bears nickelback jumped to my mind, and that's Corey Graham when watching your game. That's the okay. guy that, uh, you know, I mean, it's certainly a ball hawk, a, a very good special teams player, and then when he got his shot to play defense at nickelback, um, became one of the best in the league. And for some reason, that was one of the guys that kind of um, popped into my mind when watching your film. Um, who are some guys that you enjoy watching? Who are some guys that you enjoy picking bits and pieces of their game and, and adding it onto your own? Yeah, so when I look at guys in the NFL, I tend to look for guys who are kind of have the same build as me and the same, I guess, speed gauge before I ran the 40. Um, so like Chris Harris Jr., um, Casey Hayward, Desmond King. Obviously, he's a little bit more thicker. I think he's 205. But guys like that who... Are, are you a Chargers fan, height, Reed? <laughs> uh, I like I like powder blue. But uh, and I used to like LT a lot when I was growing up. I used to, I used to play running back when I was little. <laughs> um, but no, uh, people who are like my height, my, uh, my size, and who have consistently been played at the all-pro level, all pro level year in and year out. Um, so just seeing them and watching them every game and seeing their techniques to see what works and what makes them all pros and how good they are and just seeing what they do and trying to emulate that because my thought process is 
if what they're doing makes them all pros and makes them pro bowlers, then if I can kind of master that and try to perfect that, then I should be able to use it in an NFL game as well and get the same result. Absolutely. Some of the best in the league, and it's crazy to think they're all on the same team now, being the Los Angeles uh, Chargers, obviously. Uh, King. I forgot to say you know, you know, I wanted to throw that out there because I'm like, okay, I hope you didn't just uh, think I randomly blurted that out uh, there. Uh, I forgot that. <laughs> I, I had to kind of clarify. I'm like, you know what, I think he, he thinks I just randomly blurted that out there. But all right, so, so I'm glad you caught the drift there. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no, I mean, again, some of the best in the league, very good at their job and, uh, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how they all gel together uh, with the Chargers. A few more questions for the 2020 NFL Draft prospect, defensive back of Duquesne University by way of Boise State, Reed Harrison Ducros. And um, Reed, earlier we talked about your journey being from the state of Texas, coming from Colleyville Heritage High School. I know you were teammates with uh, now Oakland Raiders, I should say Las Vegas Raiders defensive end, yeah. Max Crosby. He led the team in TFLs and sacks last year, a big rookie season for him. Um, whether it was Crosby or any of your other past teammates that have gotten an opportunity at the next level, have you heard from any of those guys? Have they given you any advice as you now kind of look to follow their footsteps and meet them in the NFL? Oh, yeah. Um, I'm definitely closest to Max out of – um, the friends that I do have in the NFL. Uh, he texted me last season um, and then before this season just talking about kind of the process and stuff. And then um, we chat here and there. Um, but the main thing he said is really just give it your all uh, and then just give it 100% effort. I was watching that um, the hard hard knock when they drafted him. Um, you know, they were talking about his game and stuff at Eastern Michigan. Uh, and it may have the same. He really didn't know what he was doing, but he gave uh, 110% effort uh, every play, and that made the difference. Um, so that's kind of what um, that's kind of what I add to my game, or I guess more focus more on my game is um, just like trying to like run down plays and different stuff like that, and just picking little. Um, listening to what like Mayock and them were saying about what makes the great players great and then making sure I'm doing that within my game um, to heighten my opportunity to heighten my chances to be on an NFL team. Dan, certainly a, a great person, a great player to uh, take advice from Max Crosby. That is somebody okay. who's now doing it big at the next level. Um, Earlier you mentioned the game that you played back when you were at Boise against Washington State. Uh, it could be from your Boise State days. It could be from the past two years at Duquesne, Reed. Uh, who do you think is the best player that you've lined up against over the years? Is there anybody that really gave you a tough time that was a tough matchup that you could kind of uh, think about off the top of your head? Yeah, in-game, I'd say it was the Washington State receivers. Um, you know, they were tall, um, and, you know, like, obviously that offense was um, was doing really well in the Pac-12 as well as Mike Leach is um, a very famous pass raid coach. Um, and then Luke Fox, obviously, been in the NFL for a couple of years now. So just uh, playing against them um, was probably a, a tough time because um, they're so precise in their movements. And then, but I'd say the hardest matchup I had was off not off the field, but in practices. So at Boise State, it was Cedric Wilson um, who got drafted by the Cowboys. Me and him used to go at it um, all the time in practice. Um, but, you know, iron sharp is iron. So it was definitely a, a fun experience. And then as well as at Duquesne, uh, Nahari Crawford, who is with the Hamilton Tiger Cats now, he just got picked up by them. Um, and him and Cedric are completely different. Ced's like 6'2", 6'3". Sahari's 5'10", but he's quick and shifty. Um, just co- kind of going from Sed to Nahari, um, seeing the their different strengths and playing against them and working against um, those different tools and assets, it was definitely definitely a positive um, to help boost my game. But it was definitely a tough co- tough tough competition. Absolutely, and coming from the Mountain West Conference there at Boise, going to Duquesne, playing in the NEC, 
What was the competition level like for you playing in the NEC, playing in the FCS? Was it better than you had expected? Because that seems to be one of the up-and-coming conferences in the country, the Northeast uh, Conference, that is. um, Seems like that's a conference that gets better and better year after year. Yeah. um, You know, going from FBS to FCS is definitely a drop-off in talent. But I'd say I was most surprised at at my own team at Duquesne um, because you have guys, when I came in, I came in with um, my roommate, Davon Ellison, who was a Syracuse transfer, started starting safety from Syracuse, he transferred. Um, you had a uh, linebackers from Eastern Michigan, uh, receiver and safety from Illinois. So there was a lot of FBS talent at Duquesne. It still is. Um, so that was really shocking to me because I did think, I thought people went straight to FCS or straight to FBS and kind of stayed. Um, so kind of seeing that, was definitely um, a shocker to me. Um, but, no, it, the talent at FCS was definitely a lot better than I thought it would be. Um, yeah, it was definitely just it was a lot better than I thought it would be. Absolutely. Um, biggest strength that you bring to a defensive backfield, Reed, what, what are some points in your game that you take pride in? Yeah, I take pride in my technique as well as um, my knowledge of the game. My technique, I've been working on it since sixth grade at the cornerback position with people like Larry Brown, uh, Cowboys Super Bowl 30 MVP, uh, Clay Mack, who's a DV guru and he keeps keeps ascending. Um, he has clients like Jamal Adams and Jalen Mills um, located in Dallas, as well as Jay Valai um, kind of started me off on the perfecting my technique. Uh, he's the DB coach now at University of Texas. Um, so I've been working on it for a while and I definitely – definitely something that I pride myself on um I consistently work on it and it's a focal point um during the season as well as the off season whenever I can get the free time um to do it um as well as my quickness with that uh definitely helps my technique too and then my knowledge of the game um that was definitely instilled on me too as well by Jay and Larry coach Larry and then coach Clay um just kind of learning how to watch film and seeing how beneficial film game film study can be um, when it comes game time. So like just finding tendencies or uh, they'll run this play when they're on this hash. Um, if they line up in this formation, they're most likely to run these sets of plays. Just different things like that, um, all the way down to maybe a receiver will adjust his gloves more when he's going to get the ball or expecting the ball or he'll lean back on, like, screen. So, like, different things like that to pick up on um, can give you that extra step in a game, which can be the difference between, you know, a pass breakup or interception, which is a huge difference. So, Reed, final question for you. Really do appreciate your time. I know this interview has gone on a little bit longer than it expected, but really appreciate your time. This has been a really joyful uh, conversation. It's a question that I end all of my interviews with and that is let's say we have all 32 nfl general managers they're listening to this very interview why should they want the defensive back out of duquesne university reed harrison ducros a part of their team yeah well you should have me a part of your team because i'm i'm versatile um i'm quick i have production as well as i'm a leader on and off the field um versatile i can play the slot outside as well as everything like i said on special teams everything but kicking the ball um I have elite quicks. It was the fastest, fastest in the combine my short shuttle was, um, as well as my production um, in my two seasons at Duquesne University. I didn't allow any touchdowns. And then as well as at Boise State, uh, through the first four games that I started and played, um, I was the highest rated player as a PFF, and that was with people on the team like Leighton Van Der Esch, Cedric Wilson, people like that. And as well as I pride myself on being a positive influence in the community um, so that helping out with charities, um, as well as not being a a nuisance or a pest, um, something that coach has to worry about off the field. Uh, I pride myself on sharing myself um, in a positive light.
Yeah, absolutely. And I know from firsthand experience, not only because of this conversation, but talking with your coaching staffs again, uh, they, they couldn't have endorsed you in any better fashion. Um, Reed, we are 23 days away from the uh, start of the NFL draft. Really appreciate your time. Congratulations on all the success. It's been a hell of a journey, and I'm really looking forward to seeing where it takes you next. Again, 23 days away from the 2020 NFL draft. All the best, Reed. Yes, sir. Thank you so much.